Hey, hello, it's Deus again with another paint shop tutorial. I'm gonna go over some quick tips and some really basic stuff because people have been asking me questions that are really, really basic. So, um, I'm gonna take it down a notch and we'll go over some simple things. Um, quick tip. Uh, for people that have been having trouble with mixing skin tones and things like that, I already mentioned that it would be hard. Um, here's one thing I do. Just use the dropper and drop colors out of real pictures. And that will give you real colors. So that'll save you a lot of time. Um, as far as a lot of reasonable picture fixes... Um, you can like with the makeup tool for instance to fix people's acne and stuff um, it works kinda like the clone brush where you like click a piece and then you click on another part where the blemish should be and it'll try to mush the pattern together to like match the colors up and smooth out the skin and that's how that works you just wanna kinda brush it around <clears throat> Um, the red eye tool functions pretty self-explanatory, I thought, anyway. Um, it just, you just put it on the person's eye, and it'll resize itself, and you just, you know, just click it, and it'll take the red out of their eyes. Um, <clears throat> another thing with, like, making changes to pictures, other than using filters and changing the color schemes and stuff um, use the paintbrush like really small like one thing with the paintbrush use like a grain brush first of all don't use like um, a design brush use like a brush that has a grain or a texture to it and then you can add in more things to it. And the smaller the brush, the better it's going to look in the long run. Yeah, yeah, I know it takes a million years longer to use a little tiny brush to get the design that you want. But, like, if you're going to do their hair, or you want them to have longer hair or shorter hair, or you want to change the color of their eyes or change their shirt or something like that, like, you're going to have to use, like, a tiny brush with a really fine grain to do it. The, and it. If you don't do it that way, it's going to look fake. It's going to look cartoony. It's it's just as that simple. And on pictures that are low quality and don't have high DPI, you won't be able to do it anyway because you won't be able to get in close up to the pixel and make fine changes to the image. Like, um... For an example, like, if I wanted to, let me see if I can get a hairbrush here. <clears throat> like, say I wanted to make this picture of my girlfriend's hair, like, have streaks in it. Like, you'd want to use, like, a fine straight brush. Like, let me see here. And you would want to make the brush tip like really tiny, like, like tiny, tiny, and make it look like almost like a mist. So it would blend into the color of the image. Like, if you use like unrealistic colors that you tried to use from the paint, um, it just simply won't look real. It just, it won't. It'll look like you painted on it. Um, <clears throat> if you want to do it and make it look real, you have to get in really close on the image. Use fine, fine brushes. Like, when I say close on the image, like, I mean really up close. Like, get your magnifying glass and get in on the pixel of that image like I don't know why the snagger recorder stops me from actually using this program properly but <clears throat> you wanna get like ridiculously close 
like, and I do mean ridiculously close, like, like, you see, like, right here, where it's, like, just, like, little squares, like, if you want to make it look real and make a real change that won't look fake, you're going to have to get, like, this close, and do it pixel at a time, see, it's, like, 2,000%, like, you, that's what you're going to have to do to make it look real, and you're going to have to take the time to do it. Otherwise, you're going to get fake looking imagery. I mean, like, this is image right here obviously isn't a real image. This is obviously a drawn digital image. But the original DPI of this image must be ridiculous because of how realistic it does look. You know, <clears throat> like in these pictures of my girlfriend, the, um, DPI is really low, so they look pixely on by themselves. So if I tried to like resize them and make them any bigger, they would just be fuzzier and crappier. But if I had like really high resolution imagery of it, like I could get really close into the picture and make really fine changes. Like an image that's like 10 megabytes on itself. That's like a huge resolution where 100% of the image would be like the eye would fill this screen at a hundred percent like images of that high quality you can make the best types of changes to because there's so many pixels where you can take the time and make the image look realistic and do fine details on each of the pixel basis and make really intricate changes and that's the best way to make any kind of change to any photo I mean, whether you're drawing or painting or fo editing photos or whatever it is you're doing, the higher the DPI, the better, because you want to work on the picture on very tiny scale, and that's the only way you're going to make detail changes that aren't going to look fake, and it's as simple as that. Well, if you have any more questions, um, send me a message. Everybody keeps asking me for filters. Stop asking. Send me your email, and I'll send you filters. It's that simple. I don't know the websites anymore. Stop asking. <laughs>